Well, good morning and welcome to Standing Firm in God with part four with your man, Pastor Reverend Artel Belma Sr. brought to you today by Spirit of Excellence Ministries. And for those of you who are just joining us, this is going to be part four of our series and standing firm on God. And as believers in Christ, we stand firm in God by putting on the whole armor of God. Paul writes about this to the church of Ephesus in Ephesus chapter 6. And we're going through today the various elements of the armor that God has given us. Hey, quick review. In the first episode, we really focused on the fact that God has given us armor because we have the enemy who is out to accuse the brethren, who is out to prevent us from walking in godly purpose and godly destiny. The first element that he shows, he shares with us, that Paul shares with us, is that we put on the belt of truth because in today's societies where people are pushing us to the left and pushing us to the right, only God truths can steady us against the wiles and the plans and the strategic plans of the enemy. In the next episode, we talked about the breastplate of righteousness, that the breastplate of righteousness allows us to steady ourselves against the lies of the enemy, that the breastplate and the natural protects the vital organs and such as the case in the kingdom of God, God gives us his righteousness, which protects us from the lies, the condemnation, the, the unbelief that the enemy tries to put on us. Hallelujah. And today we're going to start off in a new area of the full armor of God based on Ephesians 6 and verse 15. And it says this, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. How many people today in this world, we need peace? We got war going on. We got division going on. We got politics going on. We got racism and, the, and white power going on. We got individuals who are saying, hey, you know, to the African-American, you know, pick up your arms and protect yourself. You know, we have individuals who, are, who have been taught that race is an issue that God did not create you know all these different things and we got to have god's peace on the matter so we're going to look at it not from a worldly perspective but we're going to look at it from the transcending power that comes from the word of god hallelujah he says that your feet must be shed by the preparation of the gospel of peace and the gospel is the good news of jesus christ which gives us peace which surpasses all understanding hallelujah so we need to stand in god's armor being balanced by god's peace hallelujah galatians 5 and 25 says this says this if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit hallelujah so how do we walk in the spirit we walk in the spirit by being led by God's Spirit, who leads and guides us in all truth. And we do that by following God's Word. What does God's Word say? God's Word says that we are to love our neighbor. God's Word says that we are to love our enemy. God's God Word says that we are to love our wife. God's Word says we are to love our spouse. God's Word says we are to love them, train up our children in the way that we should in the way that they should go so that when they are old they will not depart from it hey the word tells us in a summary point here that we are to live in unity with the holy spirit and with people hallelujah that's why we can get along with those individuals who are unlovable that is why we can give grace to people who, do, who deserve it. That is why we can forgive the unforgivable. Because we live in unity. Because we live based on the gospel, which is the good news of peace, of him. And that we knew we were sinners yet saved by grace. Hallelujah. You know, Psalms 119 and 105 says this. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. So why do we shut our feet 
with the gospel of peace because that is our lamp to our feet. God says that he will order our steps. He says that he will light the path, which means when darkness shows up, light will shatter and will chase darkness away. Hallelujah. And how do we do that? Another area. We commit to God's ways and his purposes. When we know God's purpose is for us to love, we know God's purpose is for us to bless and not curse. When God's purpose is for us to forgive and not walk in our forgiveness, when we know it's God's purpose that we love and not hate, then we commit our ways to God and the gospel of peace will help us do that. Hallelujah. Another verse for you, Joshua 1 and 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said it unto Moses. So Joshua is being told by God that, hey, where your feet tread upon, I have given it unto you, which means that we don't have to fear the enemy where our feet touch, where our feet, where the sole of our feet goes, that is going to be covered by the gospel of peace. The enemy has no dominion. Hallelujah. It says, confidently take what the enemy has stolen from you. Hey, has he stolen your health? Take it back by the gospel of peace. Hey, has he stolen your finances? Take it back knowing that you walk in the good news and God is with you and God is for you and he is not against you. That God directs your feet so wherever you are, God has a blessing and God has favor there so no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. In Luke 10 and 19, we see these words. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Nothing shall kill you. Nothing shall destroy you. Nothing shall discourage you. Nothing shall create anxiety in you. Nothing shall create depression in you. You know why? Because you're going to proclaim the good news to all. You are going to take the gospel, the peace, the good news of Jesus Christ in every situation. You're going to take the spirit of excellence into the workplace. You're going to take the spirit of excellence into your, into your school and into college, into high school, into elementary school. You're going to take it wherever you go. You're going to take the good news because you have on the breastplate of righteousness. You have on the belt of truth. You're going to walk in the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. The word says that the peace that he gives you, Father God, because the peace of God surpasses the understanding of man. Hallelujah. We're going to close with Romans 15 and 13, and it says these words. Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that ye may bound and hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Look, the gospel of peace allows us to have hope. Hope allows us to choose joy. Joy allows us to flow in peace because we believe what he says. Hey, did he not say it? Will he not make it so? Did he not say it? Will he not perform it? God is not a man that he should lie. You're the son of man that he should repent so we can walk in the peace that God has given us through the blood of Jesus Christ and be in Governed and directed throughout our lives with the hope that comes from the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, may God bless you. Hey, may God keep you. Hey, may God prosper you. And always put on the armor of God that he can use you in any situation and in all circumstances. God bless you until next time.